Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this video we're making a dungeon door. This episode looks at sculpting the skull at the top. It should be suitable for following along, but I'll go fairly quickly through some aspects. Do check out the links in the description and the playlist on this channel and my website gabbit.co.uk for more free courses aimed at complete beginners right through to advanced levels. So for the demon skull and the horns, I'm thinking of having the skull separate and I've already merged them both together. That's with Control J, of course. They've got a scale of one. Just check the distance it is away from your bricks. I think maybe we'll have it at a bit more of an angle or something like that later on. But to start off with, I want to keep the symmetry for the face so we can have it round about here. So I'll select that, go into sculpting mode, and we'll do a remesh. Shift R to set the size. We'll want to change the shape around a bit, so something like 0.03 for me. With that size, voxels will be good. And Control R to do the remesh. Make sure you've got some nice reference images. And the best place to start is probably the grab brush to push your shape into position. I'm going to symmetrize on the X and we'll just see how that looks. Not sure quite where my origin point is. I should have checked that first, but it looks actually like it's a good position. So we should be fine there. Every now and again, just remesh to set the shape. For the eyes, I'll just use the draw and I'll reverse it by holding down control. The brow sticks out slightly, so I'll draw a bit on there. And I'll go back to the grab brush and pull bits about to make sure it's in position. Make sure it sort of curves around, not just flat at the front. Some people make that mistake of having a very flat front face. Do have your skull shape as a cylinder. I've given mine a bit of a frown. Obviously skulls aren't like that, but demon skulls might be. Okay, so that's a reasonable shape for a kind of stylized demon. And then we'll go to a smaller voxel size probably about 0.1 and we'll remesh and we'll start doing a bit more detail not too much it's stylized remember i want to use the crease brush to start bringing in some details i quite like the crease brush to sort of draw in some of the details also the draw brush i like just on these early stages i think both can be quite effective just going around the horns roughly because we'll need to change that when we remesh the horns and they're asymmetrical as well Bring in the draw sharp for the teeth. And we can just be fairly rough here. That looks quite nice and evil. I like it. Needs a bit more of a chin. So I'll speed this bit up a little bit more because I actually decided to take out the chin in the end. I think it looks better with just the top half of the skull eventually. I sometimes use the clay strips as you can see here, like the forehead has a line of sort of substance, so I draw it with that. Go across to the draw tool for these teeth, not really sure about them, that's why I'm kind of speeding this bit up a little bit. That's why it's useful to have lots of reference images so you've got your ideas set. You can of course change and adapt as you're going on, but you do need something to anchor you every now and again. You can see I'm going across the crease brush to sort of sharpen areas up. That gives it a bit more of a stylized look. I'm holding down control with the crease brush to give it that sort of sharpened edge. At this point, I decide to get rid of the bottom set of teeth. I just feel like it works better. There's lots of ways you can get rid of sections. I've talked about the masking tools and how you can cut bits out with that. I was just using the clay strips tool to start off with, and then I thought, actually, I'll just use the grab brush. And once you've moved it about and squashed it in, you can just do a remesh, and that's quite simple. So at this point, I'm just slowly adapting the top of the teeth there. And then I use the snake hook tool because that's quite a good one. You can kind of turn it when you pull things out. And that seemed to be a good one for these sort of spiky teeth here. You just got to be a little bit careful. You can rotate it a bit too much. So just watch out for that. Also, the inflate brush is quite helpful because that can add substance and it will stop your mesh sort of overlapping itself. I was having a weird anomaly there with the clay strips tool. For some reason, it was painting on the back of the mesh and pulling it through and I just switched brushes and it went away the problem so uh, strange glitches every now and again just uh, try something new try something different and see how you get on it did take me a while to get the shape that I was happy with with these top teeth I didn't really have any good reference for uh, vampire-esque demon creatures so I had to kind of make it up as I went along Sometimes it's a good idea to go to another part of the mesh and then come back to this or take a break. Uh, it really does help when you step away from the work and come back to it, revisit it, you see it with a different light. Whenever you make any big movements or big changes, always remember to remesh so the voxel size can kind of sort itself out and you can sculpt a lot easier. And I'm slowly starting to get there with the mesh and I sort of flesh out the teeth 
by separating them with the draw sharp brush. And at this point I started to change the mesh of the skull and start working on that. Like I say, moving away from the area that I'm kind of having difficulty with as it were and moving to something else and coming back to it later on. I'm actually quite happy with how it's looking there so I just think I'll just leave it at this stage. And now just making minor adjustments to the skull, very stylized, like I say, it's got those sort of sharp edges and then I just sort of move it around with the grab brush into position, make sure I'm happy with how it's looking. Okay, so it's got a nice stylized look there. We'll do the horns next and then we'll start messing with the shape a bit more. So same process as normal, you grab one of the horns and you remesh. I'm going reasonably fine, but not too much. So I'm just getting the shape first, using the grab brush to kind of sort that out then the crease brush to sharpen up some edges and give it some structure and once i've done that then i can go in a bit finer with a remesh and start doing some detail so it's always that same process of start off with the bigger shapes and then go into the finer detail with a finer remesh i go across to the draw sharp brush for those details like i say the draw sharp is kind of like you're sketching on the object so uh, where you have shading on a sketch that you're doing you do the same with the draw sharp and I'm just going around the object, giving it a bit of flow and curve to make it look organic. And then across to the other one, I could have just copied one across to the other side and then edited it slightly, but it's a fairly quick process, so I thought I'd just give it its own style. And uh, sometimes when you copy something to the other side, it can look a bit uniform and a bit samey. So it's a good idea to just do the whole process again. It doesn't take too long, as you can see here. Then again, find a remesh across the draw sharp and giving it those sort of uh, ridges, uh, sketchiness. I tried also to make it flow around the horn eventually so it um, has a sort of curl to it. I thought that looked a bit more interesting. Try and vary the size as well of these strokes otherwise again it can look really uniform. It's very important that you don't have uniformity too much when you're doing organic shapes like this. And most of this is quite organic, even the rocks, I know they're not an organic um, object, but uh, they need an organic feel in the sense that wind and uh, cracks and so forth have weathered them. Um, so you want to be sort of fairly organic and flowy and non-uniform. So I do eventually do one more remesh, so go a little bit finer because it's just a tiny bit blobby when I'm doing that sort of sharpening up there. So I go really fine and do some very minor uh, sort of scratches and scrapes. And again, it's that variety, so not always choosing the same size brush and having a smaller brush every now and again really helps to uh, give it that organic feel. I like it. Now we need to mess with the skull's shape a little bit more. Now we can go out of symmetry, so into sculpt mode and turn that symmetry off, get the grab brush and start having a bit more fun with the shape. This can be quite a tough thing to do, especially if you're a beginner, because you've got your nice uniform shape. Symmetry always looks nice to people, so it can be a bit of a scary thing to do, to distort the shape like this. And in many ways you might think, oh, this looks much worse, but it gives it a lot more character, which is what I want. So now I'm happy with the sort of distorted shape, I decide to give it a chip tooth. So again, without the symmetry, trying to sort of separate the two sides, make them look different. This is a very important step, getting rid of that symmetry so it gives it character, it makes it again look more organic and non-uniform and I keep stressing that point, but it's very important. Uh, I'm using the draw sharp and a bit of the clay strips to get some of these scrapes in there and uh, if I need to up the resolution and do a remesh just so I've got that fine detail I can work with. Once you've upped the resolution and the detail you can add a few more sort of minor adjustments like scrapes, scratches, ridges and so forth. Again, uh, giving that sort of organic uh, material sort of form. So you're, you're actually giving it texture at that point. And again, adjustments with the grab brush. I think I'll do some big adjustments here. Yep, just to make sure it's uh, all how I think it should be in terms of the skull shape and so forth. And I think it's starting to work at this point. Once I've done that, I spend absolutely loads of time trying to just reposition it so I'm really happy with the general look and feel and composition of the piece. And I do this for quite a while really. And that composition is really important, so do spend a fair bit of time if you need to on this part. Okay, so there we have it, the skull at the top of the dungeon door. Thanks for watching, thanks for all your support, and I will see you in the next one.